Hello and welcome to climbingabbas.com. It is 2021 and I am gonna tell you about some ropes that I use on a daily basis, meaning that these are the ropes I recommend because I use them every day. Uh, if I didn't like them, I wouldn't use them. So, um, firstly, a note on that, I haven't tried every arborist rope on the market, far from it, but I have been lucky enough to buy a fair amount of ropes myself, have friends that have uh, let me use their ropes, um, I've won some ropes at competitions, I've been given some ropes, so I have used a wide range of ropes, um, so I do feel like I have a good, um, I don't know, a, a good judgment on ropes for what I like personally, so um, that is why I've kind of ended up with the ropes that I have now and the ones that I use on a on a daily basis in my work life. So I will start off with my access line. So I've had a few access lines in the past. Um, I had uh, one of my favorite ones was actually New England Escalator or Teffelberger Escalator, but uh, they don't make that anymore. Um, and that rope is kind of, it's still in good condition, but it's because it's rope it's textile it has a it has a lifetime on it um so that one i don't use anymore um so the access line of choice now is km3 max so this is teffelberger km3 max um this rope really has become popular especially among climbers that um, do competitions because it is an approved rope for um, one of the popular competition ascending devices called the Tazel of Two. Um, so this is one of the, well, this is probably the best rope that you can use in the ascent event that is compatible with the Tazel of Two device. So that's why this one has become really popular. Also, it's really static, so it's excellent low elongation um, it's 11 mil uh, this is 200 foot that I have and I use it as an access line now I don't use this to work from so I don't use other devices work position devices on here to work from this is purely for access um, now if you're using an access line some people some people who don't use an access line or, or who've never thought about it think oh that seems like a bit excessive that's that's a waste um, but the benefit of using an access line is one you know you can have your other you can have your other um, work positioning ropes kind of all set up with the systems that you want on them take them up into the tree and then once you get up into the canopy you can move to your ideal time point whereas you may get your access line somewhere you know somewhere in the upper canopy somewhere good but not in the ideal position so you can then access and then take your other work positioning line into the canopy um, but the other real benefit is once you get off your access line leave the access line in the tree you don't don't untie it and take it down and then it, it's there as um, a rescue line so you've basically installed a rescue line that you, you that is useful to you to access the tree and then it can just stay there in the tree so access line um km max 3 it's got a really really nice smooth cover it's 32 strand um and because it has such a nice smooth cover it works really well with the devices like i said like the taz um although that's not too common within tree work but it works really nice on like toothed cam descenders um, so really good for an access line and like I said before also a rescue line so that is the access line that I use super low elongation which is what you want from an access line you don't want much stretch in there because you'll be accessing using um, stationary rope system so you want it really really low stretch so that is my access line 
So let's move on to the good old faithful. So um, this rope here is Yale Focus. Um, I have various different patterns in this same rope. So what do I have? I have um, I have this one which is called Northern Lights. So it's just a different pattern, exactly the same rope. Um, and same same as Blue Moon. Uh, that's the, the kind of the, the standard run of the mill pattern is the Blue Moon. Yale, Yale Focus is uh, exclusive to Westboro, I believe. Um, Northern Lights, I don't even think you can buy that. You, I got that from New Green, um, but they don't make that. So uh, yeah, Blue Moon, I have Blue, Blue Moon Lanyard. I also have Yale Hedera, which is kind of the same but not really um, this because this is the European version and what that means is that it um, to comply with the the different rules it actually has a, um, a different makeup the European version to the North American version anyway so this is 24 strand um double braid rope it is it this is one if if i ever if i ever tell anybody if anybody asks me oh i'm just getting started out um what rope should i get i don't have much money i can only buy one rope um this is the, this is the one i'll always go to because i've enjoyed it for so long um i find that it's just that that perfect balance really between uh between not not being too bouncy but also not being too stiff um so it's put it's the perfect balance for working on a moving rope system and a stationary rope system uh it's absolutely this is just a this is just a phenomenal all-round rope really so i would really recommend if you're only if you're only going to buy one rope if you're on a bit of a budget because um, at the end of the day ropes the majority of ropes there's not a huge price difference in between them um, but if you're only gonna get one or if you need to start out with one rope and you and you don't know what style you're gonna be climbing on you don't know if you're gonna be more moving rope stationary rope then I, I always recommend the Yale kind of 11 so it's 11.7 mil so if you just search for Yale at 11.7 um, what will come up is usually blue moon but all the different variations that you can get in the different colored jackets so that is one that I would definitely recommend and like I said I've got about four or five just different variations of that specific rope so definitely a favorite of mine because we had the the Yale 117 so now we'll move on to this one which is basically Samson's version of that now let me tell you a bit of the background here I, this is what I believe I think I think this is true but who knows what you know what the behind the scenes story is but anyway what i understand is that yale were ma were, were were making the rope poison ivy which is exclusive to cheryl um so the 11.7 yale i just showed you the the focus the blue moon that was um poison ivy that you could only buy at Cheryl or through Cheryl distributors that kind of thing um, what I'm led to believe is that Yale couldn't keep up with the demand of making poison ivy and they couldn't they couldn't make it quick enough for the demand that Cheryl needed so Cheryl went to Samson and basically asked licensed whatever you want to call it got Samson to make 
a version of poison ivy which they now call there's a silver ivy tro tropical ivy so and there was a waiting waiting period i think of about six months and now samson can release their own version that they can sell under what they're calling hyperclimb so the samson version 11.7 i believe as well because they try and make it exactly this well pretty much the same um uh, double braid and 24 strand so all ticks all those boxes similar elongation i think it it is a tad bit um bit more static so a little bit less elongation and i actually I do feel like I, it feels to me when I climb on it is a tiny bit less stretched than the Yale version. Um, so, but I've been climbing on this now. Oh, when did I get it? I actually first got um, the 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 Silver Ivy version. I got that back at the TCIA. Um, I was given that by Samson. So I, I was using that and, and then I got the Hyperclimb which comes in these two colours. This is the hot version, this is the cool version. Um, so yeah, I've been climbing on it for over a year now and love this rope as well. Like when I talk about the Yale version, the, the Yale 11.7, I, I, I pretty much just enjoy the Samson version just as much because it is... It is a very, very, very close copy to the Yale version. Um, take that as a positive or take that as a negative. Take it how you will. Um, but it's ve very, very close. So I do like it. So, so there we go. So Samson Hyperclimb, that's called. Samson Hyperclimb comes in the hot and the cool colour, the orange and the purple. Orange looks a little bit boring, a little bit Euro, a little bit dull. Exact same pattern but different colours. I think the purple looks awesome. So, um, you know, go, go bright and go safe, bit boring, or go a bit out there, a bit crazy on the colours and go with the purple. So samson hyperclimb right what else we got here we go another one of my favorites this is teffelberger adrenaline so this is a 32 strand so much like the teffelberger km3 max a really nice smooth tight cover uh, really smooth feel works great with mechanicals such as the zigzag this to be honest if if i'm if i were to climb on the zigzag in a moving rope system and i knew i was going to be climbing on it and for whatever the climb was that was going to be the best system teffelberg adrenaline would be my rope of choice to use with the zigzag um it's just the combination of the two is just so smooth um now i absolutely love the zigzag i have the I have the newer one and i have the older version um but yeah absolutely love the zigzag so smooth it's so uh it feels so natural even though it's mechanical so when i say that i mean it feels very much like a hitch as much like a hitch as you can with it being mechanical anyway back to the rope because we're talking about ropes um yes it's it's just such a smooth combination f between the zigzag and the rope on the adrenaline because it's it's that that really nice smooth course uh sorry smooth cover not core um yeah just just a really good rope but the thing is with with adrenaline um if if you 
climbing large trees and you're climbing on a stationary rope system using Drenline, it will feel very bouncy. So I, I'm, I'm talking, say, if you're climbing like 70, 80 foot tree, and especially if you if you're climbing it with a uh, a base anchor so then you've got like double the amount of rope in the system it will feel pretty bouncy which is why i would always if i'm going to climb stationary rope technique i would always go for like the yale 117 or the samson 117 to climb from because it's just there's various reasons why that bounce does annoy me a little bit on on long large trees and ascents on the stationary rope system so but moving rope system dren line absolutely phenomenal or um, smaller climbs on stationary rope system I, I would use this as well um, and I do use this on on yeah smaller stationary rope climbs uh, yeah so yeah just i think the the kind of the feel in the hand um just kind of how malleable and people like to say notable uh it's it's just a really really nice rope so moving rope system adrenaline 11.8 mil i believe um 32 strand fantastic rope especially with the zigzag and finally we have the petzl flow rope so this is 11.5 and it's not actually made by petzl this rope it's made by Cousin, um another french company so i, I presume the fact that the petzl and Cousin are french and the fact that the eye on the Cousin rope goes through the zigzag is the reason why they teamed up and now Cousin make this rope that Petzl brand the Petzl flow rope so um, this is 24 strand 11.5 mil uh, brilliant rope and it's very I suppose much like the adrenaline in terms that it has quite a lot of stretch and if i'm going to climb on this rope it'll be because i know that i'm climbing a uh, moving rope system i i wouldn't tend to out of all the ropes if i knew i was going to be climbing stationary rope system especially in a larger tree i wouldn't jump to use the the petzl flow rope i would i would choose like one of the others the yale or the samson 117 if i was a climber that climbed predominantly moving rope system then i think i would tend to lean towards the adrenaline but the thing is with the petzl flow is if you're climbing on the zigzag all the time and you actually really find that feature of passing the eye through the zigzag useful then it's tough to argue really with the 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 Kazon or the Petzl flow rope because if you're using a zigzag all the time and you can pass it through the the pass the eye through it and you're only really climbing moving rope systems then you know then it's a it's a absolutely it's a it's a great rope for that it has it has the right amount of elongation for moving rope system climbing um so using a zigzag in that way having the eye pass through it's a it's a really good choice of rope okay when it comes to friction hitches the friction cord that i exclusively use now really um is i've gone through i've gone through trying so many throughout my career i've i've gone um trying regular Yale B line the brown and gold one which I apps or black and gold absolutely hate that um, tried that I've tried ocean polyester the 8 mil the 10 mil I've tried um, the sterling hitch cord I don't remember the name of it 
Uh, I've tried Samson hitch cord and I, I tried the Yale Beeline Blue 10 mil, which I actually did really like. It seemed like it, it's so different from the, the, the black and gold one, which I hated. So the Beeline Blue, I did like, and I was using that for quite a while. Um, but the one that I've really found that works for me, works for all the climbing ropes that I use, uh, works well on all of them, works well on the lanyards that I use is the Teffelper, <coughs> sorry, Teffelberger Epicord. Um, and it's the blue, kind of blue with like white and silver grayish color. Uh, definitely gray now, it's all dirty. But I, I believe that's the 9.3 millimeter version. So it's the one with blue in it, the blue flex. Um, Cause they do like a, like a, like a beige brown yellowy color that has like gold and green flecks or something um, that one's a little thicker that one's like 10 point something so 9.3 is the one that i use and i absolutely love this as a hitch cord just with the way that i tie my hitches and the length um, and the ropes that i use it on the diameter of the ropes that i use it on it just works absolutely great um i'm i can't remember the exact length of this i think it might be a 30 inch cord um so yeah that's teffelberger epicord 9.3 mil that is the one i use that is the one i will always climb on now um so yeah absolutely great hitch cord this is the lanyard I use every single day pretty much. Um, it is Teffelberger Sirius. So that's 10 mil Teffelberger Sirius. And I use the Trango Cinch device on it. Now you can't buy the Trango Cinch anymore. It doesn't, um, they don't make it anymore. So that's not something that you can go out and buy. You might be able to find one somewhere floating around on the internet, but uh, I'm really not sure on that. So I have a 15 foot lanyard. So obviously I've got my carabiner on one end with a little, um, little DMM rubber capture. I then have the little prusuk with a thimble on so I can choke that off to make it uh, a single single rope if I need that extra length then I have the device and then I have this like little bit of accessory cord with a just an accessory carabiner so because I have 15 foot it would be dragging around like tailing around everywhere I just have that so I clip that back to my harness so I'll clip I'll clip the termination end I'll clip the the trango cinch and I'll click the, clip this accessory cord and with all those loops having it on my harness I can stand up and it only just is like touching the ground so I find that accessory that little accessory cord absolutely brilliant and vital really if you don't want your your lanyard kind of like following behind you and getting twisted and caught around stubs and branches and stuff like that so that is the lanyard that i'll use on a daily basis i also have the blue moon as a lanyard those are my primary lanyards that i have and and then not technically a lanyard oh well not at all a lanyard but um, i do also have the hook as well the traverse hook the dmm captain and i have that on the 10 mil sirius as well i have what do i have there i think i have 15 meters of that on on the hook so this is used for traversing uh, this is where the akimbo is at the moment now i have the akimbo on this because one it runs absolute like a dream on here two is that you're always going to have uh, like your your main line your main tie your lifeline so your weight is going to be on that and so 
your full weight is never on this so it's not, it doesn't slip also this shouldn't be used as life support so then it doesn't matter that the akimbo is not designed for 10 mil rope because it's not life support anyway it's you're just using it as that friction adjustment device um, and it works absolutely great on the on the traverse hook it's a shame I don't get to use the hook all that often really but anyway um, most expensive traverse line ever and that is it I hope you find this useful I hope you stuck through and didn't get sick of all my waffle and all my talking codswallop or whatever you want to call it I don't know if they're just British terms but anyway I um, hope you enjoyed that hope that was useful I hope you're gonna go away and I don't know take some of my recommendations if you are in fact looking for a new rope so yeah um, go climb what are you waiting for go and buy a rope go climb um, climb safe guys thank you for watching thank you all for liking subscribing to the channel um, commenting on the videos letting other people know what what ropes you like and all that kind of stuff so um, yeah really appreciate you watching and I hope you found this video useful